Welcome back to Drawbridge Finance. My name is Levi Woods, and I am not a financial advisor. This is an opinion channel, and I like to answer questions of my viewership. So if you have a question, please leave it in the comments below, and I will get to it. So the question today that I'm covering is, say I have $10,000 to invest annually, and I'm at a 35% marginal tax rate. My plan is to put the $10,000 into the RRSP and invest my return of $3,500 to my TFSA. Is this a good strategy or should I work on maxing out my TFSA as per your channel's recommendation? So to do this, I built a little chart and it's quite complex because there's a few factors that we have to think about and the time frame is one of them. The marginal tax rate in the future is a big factor in this scenario because it affects your overall outcome of how much tax you're gonna pay, depending on if you put it in the RRSP comparatively to putting it into the TFSA. So in my previous videos, we've looked at how good a TFSA investment is. And in my opinion, I really like to keep my, my max contribution level in my TFSA. But in going through this chart, I actually discovered that you can make a little bit more money predict to make a little bit more money based on a future unknown marginal tax rate at the time of withdrawal. So it's a little bit difficult to get a really clear picture of what's going on. But I'm going to take you through this chart today and, and show you what I was working on just to look at the numbers. So I'll just go through our initial investment is $10,000. And we have an annual expected rate of return. And throughout the video, I'm actually gonna change this value so that we can see how that affects the numbers throughout the, the chart. Then we I've programmed in a months to withdrawal scenario. So we can change that. We could do like 60 months or five years, or we can do 360 months, which is 30 years. Now the current tax rate as stated from the, the question was 35%. And now the future tax rate is unknown. We know that if we put the money into a TFSA, we're not gonna be taxed on it in the future. So whatever the value is, we are gonna be able to pull that out tax-free. But any money that goes into an RSP, we're gonna to have to guess or predict what that tax rate might be, and that's gonna affect the overall amount of income that we have. So as always, I'm gonna start with our characters, Alice, Bob, Charlie, Doug, and Emily. Now in this scenario, there's really no clear answer as to who's making the better investment choice. So we'll just play through and, and see who, who ends up on top. Now Emily, she takes the, the $10,000 and she puts it all into the RSP. She gets a 35% return from her income tax. She takes that $3,500 and she adds it to the initial investment of 10,000, giving her $13,500 in her RSP. Doug, takes his $10,000 and he splits it up. He decides that he's gonna put $5,500 into his TFSA and $4,500 into his RSP. His RSP gives him a rebate of 35% when he does his income tax and he gets $1,575 back. He puts that into his, back into his RSP, so his total RSP is worth $6,075 and his TFSA is worth $5,500, giving him a total of an investment of $11,575. Now this is a lower investment than Emily, but you have to keep in mind that part of this is not gonna be taxed. Anything in the TFSA is not gonna be taxed in the future, and the RSP is gonna be taxed uh, at whatever your marginal tax rate is at the time of withdrawal. And it doesn't matter when you withdraw that, in two years or 30 years, you get taxed at whatever your current tax rate is. So Charlie, he does something similar, but instead of popping the $5,500 in that Doug did, he does some math and he figures out that if he puts $3,077 into his TFSA, then he puts uh, his RSP at 69.23. The 35% rebate will total 24.23, and if he, instead of putting the, the rebate back into his RSP, he's going to put that rebate back into his TFSA, therefore maxing out his TFSA, $5,500, and so he ends up with $5,500 in his RSP compared to Doug's $5,500, and he ends up with an extra almost $900 in his RSP by doing this, by putting a bigger contribution in the RSP and then taking the rebate and putting it into the TFSA. So his initial investment is 12,423. Now, Bob is also going to do the same thing that Charlie did. He's gonna put the whole 10,000 into his RSP. He's gonna get the $3,500 back. Now this is the same 3,500 that Emily got back, but he's gonna take that 3,500 and put it into his TFSA, actually under contributing to his TFSA. 
And it's, we'll see at the end of the video how this works for him because he's max it, maxing out his absolute biggest return is equal to Emily. He's got the full $13,500 invested, just split up between the 10,000 in RSP and 3,500 into the TFSA. Alice, she actually hasn't been contributing to her TFSA, so she's got some room in it. She's not limited to the 5,500 per year, so she can put the whole $10,000 into her TFSA, and her current investment value is $10,000. So now let's skip forward. I'm going to show you guys the rest of the chart and we're going to take a look at some of these numbers. This first one is the total value at withdrawal. And I'm just going to kind of glaze over this because it doesn't give us a really accurate uh, value of what they have because there's no tax been deducted from this. What we have to consider in this scenario is that anything in this RSP is going to be taxed when you withdraw it. So you have to take the total that money that you have, subtract the the tax that's taken off, and then you get this future value. I've got I've broken the numbers out here so you can see the math on it. But uh, Bob has you know eighteen thousand two hundred and twelve dollars in his RSP. Subtract the tax, and he ends up with eleven thousand dollars. Add it to the sixty three hundred that he has in his TFSA, and you get a total value of eighteen thousand two hundred and twelve. So what's really interesting in this scenario is that. Uh, Alice, Bob, and Charlie have done different things with their money, but the after-tax value at, at the end of the term is actually equal. So, and that doesn't really change. If we change the, the expected rate of return to 7%, they're going to have a lot more money, but it's going to be equal. If we change the term length to, say, only five years or 60 months, again, we're, you're going to see that we're equal. Alice, Bob, and Charlie are all equal. So although they've done slightly different things with their money, um, because the tax rate is the same, the future tax rate is the same to the current tax rate, they end up with equal amounts of money. Where this starts to change is when we see a either reduced or increased future tax rate. Emily actually hasn't done very well if the tax rate stays the same, putting all of her money into the RSP, having an initial high investment. Um, she didn't fare very well. She actually did worse in this scenario if the tax rate stays the same. So I'm gonna change this back to 30 years so that we can get a, an accurate idea of what's going on. And let's just start to play with these numbers. So let's say that you're only going to take out you know, a small amount, say $30,000 a year, and because it's such a low amount when you retire, you're going to pay a very low tax rate on that money. So let's put a, a future tax rate of 10% and see how that affects us. You can see that Bob made the best choice. Now, his, uh, his money is worth more than, more than Charlie, more than Doug, and slightly more than Emily when that tax rate is really low. Um, he's certainly done better than Alice. And really, he's, he's done quite well in this scenario. Now, I don't know about you, but when I retire, I'm actually going to want to keep my income similar to what my income is when I work because if I'm making $50,000 a year and then all of a sudden I'm not working, I still want to have that $55,000 to spend on things like vacation and traveling and enjoying my life. So I'm expecting when I retire that I'm going to be damn close to that 35% tax rate. So let's, let's put this in at 30% and let's just see who, who wins in this scenario. Now again, Bob actually wins out in, in this scenario because he gets the, the most amount of tax. Um, he gets the most amount of money in the end. And Emily again has done very poorly. Um, but what if the tax rate is higher? We don't know what the tax rate is going to be. So let's just plug in a number like 40%. All of a sudden, we get back into this TFSA actually saving us because we originally paid 35% tax. And now in the future, if we're paying 40%, the valuation increases as we go through. And Emily, still not doing that, doing very well. So although she was you know, this is a relatively smart investment, taking $10,000, investing it in your RSP, taking the rebate and putting it back into the RSP. This is, this is smart. But by looking at these numbers, I can say pretty, I can see pretty clearly that the people that chose to put a portion of their RSP refund back into their TFSA instead of into their RSP, they actually win. So this question that Ramon asked, 
you know, it really leads me to believe that I should be taking a portion of my RSP contribution and taking that refund and putting it into my TFSA for maximum return. Now, of course, this is where you have to go and sit down with somebody because there's so many little things that can affect this. I mean, if you're absolutely contributing the max to your TFSA every year, you wouldn't have the room to put $10,000 into it. Maybe you don't actually have the room to contribute $10,000 directly to your RSP and you'd be forced to do some splitting like Doug had to do. And I mean, you're still making a good return. Other things that could affect this scenario are, are when you're planning on taking it. I mean, if you're putting in your TFSA and you want that money when you're 85 years old, it's going to be available to you when you're 85. If you put it into the RSP, by the time you're 85, you will have been forced to put it into a RIF or a LIF. So if you've already contributed a lot to your RSP and you're young, you may want to stop contributing. I myself st stopped contributing to my RRSP when I was 30 years old because I did the math on it and I was worried that if my RSP value was going to be well over a million dollars, I would never ever be able to get any of that money out without paying the super, super high tax rate. So I've chosen to invest in other ways and kind of avoid my RSP while maxing out my TFSA. And I mean, that's me personally. So every single person is going to have a different scenario. And I always encourage everybody to sit down with a financial planner and look at different scenarios. But I would definitely recommend looking at scenarios like Ramon had suggested. We're taking the $10,000 RSP, taking that refund, putting it into the TFSA and making a lot of money because even when the, the tax rate is slightly higher in the future, you're making near the maximum. And so in almost all the scenarios we, we run in this, if we change these, these uh, future tax rates to be lower, because we would hope that, uh, Bob is winning. He, this is a good call. Thank you so much, Ramon, for your comment. And hopefully there's some more comments in this video and we can build some more charts in the future to answer your specific questions. Thank you so much. See you next time. Let's get rich together.